1356 needs to be stopped. Or does it? Let's take a look. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be checking out the 1356 a timeline extension mod for EU4. If you enjoy this video consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps out a lot and you can become a member today. So this is 1356, like I said, a timeline extension mod for EU4. Here we are in the starting screen. As we can see, there are a couple of new start dates, about five before the vanilla ones. We have the Grand Campaign, Barbarossa's Throne, which is an alt history start, and then some other ones, but they're not in 1356. But this is the default start date. 1356 adds nearly 100 years of content to EU4, bringing the start date back to December 25th, in that same year, the date Charles IV's Golden Bull was signed. In this mod we get 4 new bookmarks, new history files which result in the most accurate 1356 start date, many new nations that existed around the world, many historical rulers, a new age, the age of feudalism, 6 new tech levels which have been tweaked for balance, diplomatic relations which have already been set up for the 1356 start date, a bunch of new religions, new events, new mission trees, and more. So let's see if this mod really needs to be stopped. And here we are in the game, so let's take a look at what Europe looks like in this start date. Probably the thing that most of you guys will care about is this region right here, basically Anatolia and the Balkans. As we can see, Byzantium exists. They're about the same size as vanilla EU4, but their provinces have been moved around a bit. They are already on the decline even 100 years earlier than the vanilla start date. They have Morea as a subject. The Ottomans do exist. As we can see, they're just starting out their conquests and taking over Anatolia and the Balkans, and they are currently in a war with Girmian and Hamid, these two Beyliks right here. Here we can see some other Beyliks, most of them you would probably recognize because they do have cores in vanilla EU4. This is a new nation right here, Sicilia. Ooh, they're Catholic. We'll check out the religion soon enough and a bunch of other nations. Serbia is looking pretty big in this start date and Bulgaria does exist. We do have two other Bulgarian nations right here, Vidin and uh, Dobruja. We also have Thessaly, which is an orthodox nation. They also have the Palaiogos dynasty. Maybe they were like... Uh, breakaway byzantine state you guys can tell me in the comments i'm not very familiar with that things are looking as usual over here in sort of the hungarian region they do have croatia and wallachia they do start out with moldavia as their subject though and they are in a war with venice so they're trying to take over these provinces over here going over to iberia we can see that it does look a little bit different we have castile and Trustamara. Basically, this is the War of the Two Peters, and they're represented as sort of two different states instead of like a civil war with just some rebels around Castile. Definitely a much cooler way to represent something like this than with rebels. Going over to France, we can see that France are in the Hundred Years' War versus England. So we do have the French subjects here. Some of them you know, some of them you don't. But we do have Aquitaine right here, Anjou, which is basically Provence, Navarra owns these provinces are very cool that's not something i actually knew happened historically navarra owning these provinces they are allied to england speaking of england they do have a couple of subjects they have wales and aquitaine as their junior partners and a couple of subjects in the british isles as well but they do seem to be winning the war against france so i guess this is the part where they get these provinces down here and the provinces in normandy maybe maybe not you guys can tell me but we also have two burgundies in this mod a little bit more historic accurate basically this other burgundy the county of burgundy is a junior partner to the regular burgundy and that's the only subject they have see they don't have flanders brabant or holland although these guys do have junior partners of their own like hainaut and nevers which is pretty cool not a lot of changes in the british isles like i said northumberland and wales are subjects of england as well as lancaster they're a vassal. Going over to Italy, not a lot of changes. Sicily does exist. This isn't under Aragon just yet. They do have a subject, Athens. Naples over here, they have Provence as a junior partner, and they have some provinces over here. The Pope is the same, and we have some more nations in northern Italy, like Nizza, Modena, Pisa, Padua, Verona, and this one right here, and this one too. A lot of them you will know from Vanilla EU4. Going over to the HRE, it does look a little bit different than Vanilla EU4. It is slightly larger. These provinces in here are in the HRE too, some provinces down here as well, and some more provinces up here. You guys will know that basically 
Burgundy subjects in vanilla EU4, their provinces are part of the empire, but they themselves are not. Well, in this mod, they are. Bohemia is the emperor right now, not Austria. The electors are still the same, and this is the Holy Roman Empire interface. Pretty familiar. Going over to Scandinavia, Sweden and Norway aren't junior partners of Denmark. Looks like Sweden and Finland too are having some rebel problems, but Finland is a subject of Sweden. We also have Sápmi right here, the nation of the Sami people, as well as Ingria over here. Poland Lithuania looks a little bit different too. Some other nations over here. Poland does have subjects such as Galicia, Volhynia, Pluk, Warsaw, and this nation right here. Lithuania has only one subject, this guy right here, and these are all the Ruthenian nations down here. A lot of Russian principalities too, a lot more broken up than vanilla EU4, where basically here Novgorod is the dominating power. We have the White Horde, the Blue Horde, no golden or great hordes just yet, but some familiar hordes too. This is the situation in Northern Africa, Morocco and Tunis are a lot smaller, and there is a bunch of other nations here too. We also have Alexandria and Syria existing, they're subjects of the Mamluks, this is what the Middle East looks like. Arabia, pretty familiar, but we do have the Jalayurid nation right here and some other nations in Persia instead of the Timurid nations. Some changes in India too. We're not going to cover them too much. Basically, the main focus of this mod is Europe and China, and this is what China looks like. Basically, we have the Great Yuan still existing. They are at war with Ming in the Red Turban Rebellion. And not just Ming, but Shu, Shi, Wu, and Qi as well. And we also have another Another nation here, Liao Yang. Japan is doing Japan stuff. Of course, Yuan is the holder of the Mandate of Heaven. And that's pretty much the most important things you need to know about the map. Most of the changes are in Europe, North Africa, and Asia. Not a lot in Southeast Asia as much as I can notice. I mean, of course, the borders would be different, but the main focus, like I said, is on China and Europe. Now let's go into the religion interface. And here we can see the religion overview of Europe. You would think there's not a lot of changes, but there's more than meets the eye. Let's take a look at our first new religions featured in this mod, the Romuva Faith, which gives you monthly war exhaustion minus 0.02 and tolerance of heathens. This is one of those Slavic religions. We also have the finno uralic Faith, which is only present in the nation of Sapmi and some provinces over here in Estonia. Basically, you get tolerance of heretics and fort defense. Pretty nice flavor and I do think this is something that should or could be added to vanilla EU4. Going over here, we do have one Tengri province in Hungary with the Kuman culture and we'll get back to cultures pretty soon soon, but the biggest changes are featured in the Levant and Anatolia. We can see that a lot of provinces in Anatolia, at least on this coast right here, are still Orthodox. We also have some Orthodox provinces up here and Coptic being featured all the way over here through here and it's looking very nice we also have catholic provinces right here and of course there used to be crusader states all around here we also have the nation of alexandria we do have a coptic province well it is alexandria itself it is coptic and the culture is coptic egyptian like i said we'll get back to that soon but coptic is a lot bigger in the ethiopia region as well so a lot more Coptic provinces in 1356 rather than 1444. Going back over here, we do have the Nestorian faith. And it does seem that no nation is actually Nestorian, but only provinces are. And we do have one more of those provinces down here. Moving further along, we do have a larger presence of the Zoroastrian faith. As we can see some provinces right here. It's not only Yazd like in vanilla U4. One down here, some over here. We do have Zoroastrian nations. Mazandran is Zoroastrian, for example. And we even have some Nestorian provinces up here too. Not a lot of changes in India, but this is what East Asia looks like. As we can see, Vajrayana, of course, it is the official faith of the nation of Yuan, so of course it will be a lot more present. Confucian is smaller, and Korea is Mahayana, so they're not Confucian in 1356 just yet. Going over into the culture map mode, we can take a look at some of the small but very nice changes. Starting off with Iberia, we do have Catalan and Aragonese present. And we have two different Andalusian cultures, basically Andalusian and Andalusi. This one is of course part of the Maghrebi culture group, which features Andalusi, Moroccan, Algerian and Tunisian. This is what the French culture groups look like, not too much changes. Breton is in the French culture group, but we also have Brythonic, which is in the Celtic culture group, along with Cornish, Welsh, 
Highlander, and Irish. We have the Berber culture group, something that is not present in vanilla U4, basically in the more southern portions of the Maghreb. Here we can see the Kuman culture, which is part of the Tatar culture group, along with these provinces right here. And the Greek culture is a lot more prevalent. Of course, that would be expected. It's right here in Anatolia. And we also have the Cappadocian culture, as well as the Coptic Egyptian in two provinces in the Mamluks right here. You already know about Pontic and Gothic. We also have the Assyrian culture group featured with Assyrian and Aramaic. So that's a very nice addition. I do think this is something that should be in vanilla U4. Of course, assuming these people existed in 1444. And those are, I would say, the main culture changes. Well, at least the ones we need to know about. We also have the Baltic culture group, which features Old Prussian and Kuronian, as well as Latvian and Lithuanian. And Estonian is here too in the Finno-Ugric culture group with Ingrian, Karelian, Sami, and we have a lot more Scandinavian cultures too, such as Gaitish, Scanian, Truandish, and Icelandic. So that's pretty cool to see. Now here I have tagged into Bohemia to check out some nation-specific things, and like I said, we do have the Age of Feudalism, a new age for this mod. Here we can see the objectives and age bonuses as well. A king to follow, have your ruler heir, be a general, and fight a war against another country. Pretty nice. Have 20 mercantilism or be a member of a trade league. Do interactions with the estates, be papal controller, have a kingdom rank, and lead a personal union. Have four different subjects and be a kingdom and have 40% of your army be cavalry. And we get Feudal de Jure Law. You already know this from Vanilla U4, Scholarly Studies, some institution stuff. This is basically the transfer subject one, but with some more bonuses. Cavalry Supremacy for some cavalry bonuses, some mercenary stuff, siege ability and looting, some more governing capacity stuff. This is for the Timurids, basically when you form the Timurids. This is for the Eastern Hordes, the Celestial Mandate for Chinese cultured nations, and a Bohemian Imperial Dominance for Bohemia. Of course, like I said, they are Emperor. Speaking of Bohemia, we do have the elective feudal monarchy government reform for them, as well as the high feudal monarchy, so some new government tiers and government types. You also have some more here, agricultural, urban, freedom of movement, basically lots of new ones. The only familiar ones I can see are the noble privileges at tier 4 and vanilla U4 there at tier 2. And basically these down here are familiar ones, so we have the new ones up to tier 3. You can check these out for yourselves, all of them are really cool. Here I have tagged into France to check out some nation specific things about them. They have a unique subject type, Eudel Vassals. So this is new for this mod, they have, well, the usual vessels that they have in Vanilla U4 as well as some more, such as Anjou and Forez, which sort of better represents the structure of the French kingdom during this time. You guys know they were basically their own HRE, pretty much. They have the high feudal monarchy government type, which we checked out when we were in Bohemia. We get some diplomatic relations, income from vassals, liberty desire, very cool stuff. Here we are in the tech screen. Like I said, there are six new tech levels. Basically, this goes up to level 38 and we start off at level 2. So that's something you need to know about that. Going into the ideas, we do see that we can pick 10 idea groups instead of the usual 8 in Vanilla U4. Of course, it will be fitting. There's about 100 more years to play. And going into the idea groups, we can see a lot more idea groups. Here are the familiar ones, like innovative religious economic. But here we have settlement ideas, which is basically, well, a revamped version of expansion ideas, which is pretty cool. There are lots of cool stuff to go through in this idea group, and you should definitely try it out and go for a colonial playthrough if you're playing this mod. Admin and humanist are familiar. We do have scholarly ideas. We can see reform progress, admin advisor cost, institution spread, chance of error, legitimacy, stuff like that basically to well like it says scholarly focusing on education you know playing tall as well as expanding too then we have imperial ideas of course these would focus a lot on conquest we have ccr goods produced a very strong idea group minus 25 percent state maintenance autonomy change absolutism reduce inflation and admin efficiency this is probably the strongest idea group in this mod going over to diplomatic we have navigation ideas these pretty much replace exploration ideas we can see here they also have some cool stuff by like gaining splendor, gaining an explorer and conquistador when you get them. Basically a revamped exploration. Maritime and influence you already know. You have domineering ideas which focus even more on subjects rather than influence or diplo. It's all about getting stuff from your subjects. 
Diplo vassalizing, Diplo annexing, and stuff like that. And we have Majesty Ideas, another idea group focused on more efficiently ruling your nation. Going over to the mill idea groups, we have Professionalized Ideas, focusing on high army professionalism, army quality, of course you were already guessed by the name, and we have Condottier Ideas, which focus on buffing your mercenaries and everything else about mercenaries as well. Here I am as England, they have the English monarchy government type, gives us minus unrest, legitimacy, minus absolutism, and plus 50 governing cap. Nice little unique government type right there. But if we go into the institutions, we can see that the institution of mercantilism has spawned in Lubeck not too long ago. As we can see, not a lot of nations have it, mostly the Italian ones and some northern German ones, basically the biggest trade nations. And we also have another New Age Gunpowder, which arrives in 1400, which gives us plus 5% siege ability. Mercantilism gives us minus 5% cost to promote mercantilism. Not a very good one, but it does add flavor, so it's very nice to see. Let's embrace it for England. There we go. Here I am as Byzantium. They also have a unique government type, the theme system. A very powerful one, it gives us a diplomat, national manpower, land maintenance, mercenary manpower, governing capacity. Byzantium have cores in this mod too, but not just in the Balkans, but in Anatolia as well. A couple of provinces right here, pretty good. You could use them to reconquer them from the Ottomans. And like I said, the Ottomans are just starting to rise up in this mod and become even more powerful. So you better deal with them if you're playing as Byzantium or any of the Turkish Balix as soon as you can. We already know about the Ottoman government type. Now that I've shown you guys the 1356 Grand Campaign start date, let's check out this Barbarossa's Throne alternate history start date and what it looks like. And this is what the map looks like on first glance. As you guys can notice, it's a lot more different than how it actually looked like. So let's see what it has to offer. So when you start this campaign, you get this event, no matter which nation you're playing with. And it basically presents the major players in this start date, the German Empire, Byzantine Empire, and Kingdom of Jerusalem. And you can read about Jerusalem here, read about the German Empire here, and read about the Byzantine Empire here. And then you can click, all right, we can start. So since we're already here, we can see that Byzantium is a lot more successful in this start date. Basically, they own all their cores, which I previously showed off. And they have even more cores this time. One right here, some more in Anatolia going all the way over to Trebizond. Some down here and they have claims on which nation? The nation of Rum. So they exist in this start date. Of course, they're a sultanate. Not too much other changes in the Balkans. Basically, all of these other nations are smaller. But we do have a ton of crusader states in this alternate start date. If we go into the religions, we can see that Catholic is very prevalent over here, as well as the Coptic faith being present in the Nile Delta. We have the nation of Alexandria, they are a Coptic nation, as opposed to being a Muslim nation in the other start date. We also have the Kingdom of Jerusalem, they exist, and they are pretty big. We have the nation of Tripolis, another crusader state, as well as Antioch, Sicilia, Edessa, and all of these are basically crusader states. We even have Catholic over here, Carthage exists of all nation, they are a monastic order, so that's very cool, something that you definitely want to play as. They are Catholic, like I said. Over here, not too much changes, the Removan religion is a bit larger, or maybe these nations are actually Removan, to be honest. We have Kurland, Livonia, Lithuania, this nation right here, Estonia. Of course, the HRE looks a lot different, we have actually Germany existing at this point. Friedrich von Stauffen, they have the Teutons as a march, and uh, this dynasty, von Stauffen is also present in Jerusalem. Maybe a little PU potential here? Hmm? Think about it. But a lot of new nations exist like Franconia, Westphalia. I mean, you do know them from Vanilla U4, but what I'm saying is they're present right now. Engern, Eastphalia, hmm, Westphalia and Eastphalia. Brandenburg looks pretty much the same. Lusatia, the HRE, well, it doesn't exist. We just have a bunch of German nations. So that's why someone over here blobbed and managed to form Germany. Not really, but you know, we can imagine. Italy looks a lot different too. And oh, what do we have here? We have the nation of Rome. They still exist. So uh, very powerful historical nations existing at the same time. We have Carthage, Rome, Biz, 
Rum, Germany, and Delusia is pretty strong in this alternate start date as well. Basically, the main focus of this alternate start date is about here. The Russian nations and the Scandinavian ones look pretty much the same as the other start date, although the nation of Skan exists. Sicily is a junior partner of Germany, funnily enough, I didn't notice that when I clicked on Germany. And they also have the county of Burgundy as a junior partner, so this nation right here, not the actual Burgundy. France is even more torn up, they do have a bunch of subjects, once again the feudal vassals, and Toulouse exists down here. Iberia is also a lot more broken up, of course the Andalusians haven't been defeated just yet, and Valencia is free. Well, they're not free, they're actually a junior partner of Aragon. The culture is also different in some regions, such as in Egypt, we have the Egyptian culture. But the Mamluks still exist, and it is their primary culture. Hmm. But it is in a different culture group, basically the Egyptian culture group, which also features Syrian, Turkish, and Mashriki. Now, I don't know about some of these choices, but it is nice to see anyway. The great powers in this alternate start date are Yuan, Schwabia, well, which is basically Germany, Delhi, Majapahit, Byzantium, the White Horde, England, and Hungary. Slight changes in East Asia as well. Yuan looks pretty much the same as the other start date, but we don't have that big nation right here, and Yuan also holds some land in Korea. We also do have a Nestorian nation in this start date, Assyria, and we get minus two national arrest and plus two max promoted cultures from being Nestorian. And in a nutshell, that's pretty much what this alternate start date looks like. If you want to play this one, I do recommend Byzantium, Rum, Carthage, Germany or even Rome. Do they have cores on the entirety of Europe? No, but you can still form Rome as Rome. Well, maybe not form Rome, but definitely restore it. I guess the Pope doesn't exist in this update. The papacy never happened. But how does the Great Schism still exist? Well, you're just gonna have to figure that out for yourself. And that's pretty much 1356, a timeline extension mod for you. For a huge shout out to Dan John Min and all the creators and everyone that has worked on this mod. Guys, check out this mod if you're bored of vanilla U4. It starts 100 years before it and you're definitely gonna have a lot of fun whether in the real world start date or this alternate one i like both of them a lot this one is very cool so maybe this one will tempt you more but check out the other 1356 start date as well you will have a lot of fun you won't get bored because it's before you first time frame rather than after it so you're not gonna be like oh, i don't like playing into the late game or whatever as always the link for this mod will be in the description let me know in the comments below what's the next mod that i should showcase if you enjoyed this video consider leaving a like and subscribing it really helps out a lot and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video